Hi everyone. In Algebra 2 we are starting our trig unit and the first lesson is about coterminal angles. We're going to do a little review first. How many degrees are there in a full circle? So back in geometry we learned that there's 360 degrees in a full circle and we're going to be graphing some angles on a coordinate plane. So let's review the quadrants and label our x and y axis. So there's the x-axis, y-axis, where both x and y are positive, that is the first quadrant. We usually do that with the Roman numeral. And then going counterclockwise, quadrant 2, going down, quadrant 3, and over to the right, quadrant 4. All right, when we put angles on the coordinate plane in trig, the origin is where the vertex is. Of our angle and what we call the initial side is along the positive x-axis so this is always where our angles start we're going to put another ray on there that'll be our terminal side I'm going to put it over here and when we think about this angle, we're thinking that we're starting at the initial side and going to the terminal side. So notice the little arrow I drew there. So there's my angle, call it angle theta. And here's the terminal side. Vocabulary wise, initial usually means the beginning, the start. And terminal, think of the word terminate, uh, the same root word to stop. So this is where our angle stops. Um, angles that are measured or, or that are drawn in the counterclockwise direction are positive. Let's review what the angles would be. If I went all the way from the initial side to the positive y-axis here, that would be 90 degrees. If I went over here to the negative y-axis, that would be 180 degrees. And continuing, this would be 270 degrees. And back to the initial side, that would be 360 degrees. So let's estimate, what's my angle theta approximately? Eh, let's just take a guess. Let's say it's about 130 degrees. So we can have positive angle measures and we can also have negative angle measures. And you would still start at the initial side, but you would draw your angle counter Oh, excuse me, clockwise. So positive is counterclockwise, negative is clockwise. So let me draw that. So here's an angle, but going in the other direction. Now if theta was 130 degrees, what is the measure of this angle? We'll call it angle alpha. What is that equal to? Well, if 360 is a full circle, and the other angle was 130. That means this angle is 270. But because we drew it in a clockwise direction, it's negative. So it's equal to negative 200 and, oops, I messed up a little bit. It's not 270. I think I looked at that other 270. Here we go. Let's try that again. This would be 230 and negative 230. Here we go. All right, so we can have positive and negative measures of angles. Let's draw a 500 degree angle, problem number one. Now 500 is more than 360, so let's start with our initial side. And what we're going to do is go in the counterclockwise direction, and we're going to draw a circle. We're going to do a full circle. That would be 360, but I need to go a little bit further. And let's see, if I subtract 360 from 500, how much further do I have to go? 140. So this angle needs to go a little bit further. And now I'll draw my terminal side. And there's my 100, or 40, or excuse me, my 500 degree angle. If I wanted to draw an angle for negative 960, that's going to be going in the clockwise direction starting with the initial side but how many times around do I have to go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 
360 every time I go one full rotation. If I add 360 to this, I'll have negative 600 degrees. So one full rotation, and I'm at negative 600. Not done yet, so negative 600 plus 360 would be negative 240. So I do another 360. I still have negative 240 to go. Well, where would negative 240 be? So I'm going to change color here because I'm overlapping with some other stuff. So let's see. Going from here to here, that'd be 90. And then another 90 would be 180. And that means I need to go 60 degrees more, which would be right about there. So here's my terminal side. And that is a negative 960 degree angle. All right, coterminal angles are angles that have the same terminal side. Or you can say the terminal sides coincide. Coincide means that they're the same, right on top of each other. So using this information, we want to find coterminal angles. They're basically the same angle, just like up here, the, neg the 130 degree angle is the same as the negative 230 degree angle because they have the same terminal side. So for 1,000 degrees, I want a positive and a negative coterminal angle for that. So what I can do is just add and subtract 360 degrees. I'm going to subtract 360, and I get 640. So there's one option for my positive coterminal angle. But I could keep going. I could subtract another 360, and this time I'll get 280 degrees. That also is another positive degree measure that is coterminal. I'll put that one there. Now to get a negative one, I still need to subtract another 360 to get into the negative value, and I'll get negative 80 degrees, and I can write that here. Now this time, if you're starting with a negative angle and you need a positive angle, coterminal angle, you're going to add 360. And that'll get me to 130 degrees. If I want another negative, I got to subtract 360. So I'll start with that negative 230 and subtract another 360, and we'll get negative 590 degrees. All right, for the last one, last two, um, we really like to have angles that are between 0 and 360 degrees. They're easier to deal with and easier to graph. Like we saw with the examples before, if I have negative 960, that's not very easy to figure out. So at least doing it physically on the coordinate plane. So if I had a coterminal angle that's the same as that, I would rather graph that. So 855, I want to find a coterminal angle, but between 0 and 360 degrees. So I'm just going to keep subtracting 360 until I get to a number that is between 0 and 360. Alright, so 495, I can go a little lower. That's still more than 360, so I'll subtract another 360, and I get 135 degrees. So there's my angle that's coterminal between 0 and 360. Last question, are these two angles coterminal angles? Verify that, show your work. So if they're coterminal, then I should be able to add multiples of 360 from one and get the other. So if I take 40 and add 360, I'll get 400. 
Okay, well, I'm not quite to 760. Let's try again. Let's take the 400 and add 360, and I get 760, which is what we were get, trying to get. So there we go. So yes, they are coterminal. Now, if I didn't get 760, if I got a little below or a little above, then I've missed it. So it wouldn't be coterminal.